Hey everybody, Jeremy here and welcome to this quick tutorial on creating portals and working in mixed reality. Mixed reality is becoming a big part of the XR landscape, so Shape has made it super easy for designers to work directly in mixed reality when creating MR experiences. So let's get started. So to work in mixed reality, we first have to activate pass-through mode. And there are two ways that you can do this. You can find the pass-through toggle in your menu by pressing the hamburger button and selecting either the environment tab or the pass-through and mixed reality tab. Or you can just rotate your non-dominant hand controller in and press this icon here. Now, what makes MR experiences powerful is when your design actually interacts with the user's physical environment. So to ensure that your project is aligned to the real world, we need to enable room scale mode. And we do that by going to the pass-through and mixed reality tab and turning room scale mode on here. Now, in order for room scale mode to work, you need to set up the geometry of your room. Now, some of you might have already done this in your Quest headset for other applications, but if not, no worries. Just turn on room scale mode and follow the prompts for setting up your room. Now, just a couple of things to keep in mind. When you're in room scale mode, your virtual environment is locked to your physical environment and it's at proper scale. So the normal methods of navigating and shapes are disabled. So to move around the room, you have to physically get up and walk around. So once you have room scale mode set up, turn room mesh on so you can see the outline of your room. Now, the cool thing about this is shapes treats your walls like objects. So you can actually snap objects to the walls of your physical room like this. You can also zoom out of the room by using your grip buttons. And as you can see here, I still have the outline of my room. So we call this dollhouse mode. This allows me to create comfortably without having to physically move around my room. And then just by clicking back to reality, my project realigns with my physical space. Now on a quick side note, we also have a headset simulation mode. And this is great for designers who are prototyping for different types of headsets. So this mode simulates the field of view of a lot of the different headsets that are currently in the market. Uh, you can also share your room if you're collaborating with other designers who are sharing the same physical space that you are in. So this ensures that all headsets are aligned to the same architecture of the room. Now, before we get into building our portal, I wanna take just a second and show you a really cool feature. I wanna talk about object occlusion. And I think the best way to describe object occlusion is just to demonstrate how it works. So I am currently in pass-through room scale mode, so my scene is aligned to my physical world. And let's say that I want an object to sit behind this ottoman out of view of the user. Uh, but as you can see, the object is overlaid on top of everything, so it's not very convincing. So in order to get this object behind my ottoman, I need to occlude it or mask it out. So let's add a shape to my environment and edit it to fit this piece of furniture. Okay, now that we've built out the ottoman, I'm gonna press the shapes button on my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna activate the color tool, and then I'm gonna come over here to the color picker, which is located on the bottom of my non-dominant hand controller. And I'm gonna hover over this sphere here to bring up a sub-menu, and from here, I'm gonna choose pass-through from the top of the menu. And now I've got this pass-through color, it's loaded into my controller, and I can color the virtual ottoman with pass-through. And this is what creates an object occlusion. So now I can place the object behind it out of view of the user. Okay, really quick side note, this is super cool. Did you know that you can add shadows to your shapes projects? So to activate shadows, press the hamburger menu button on your non-dominant hand and go to the environment tab. And this is where you're gonna find your lighting and shadow controls. And you can control the intensity of both the lights and the shadows in your scene. And by grabbing the sun icon here with your trigger button, you can affect the direction of the light, which in turn affects the direction of your shadows. Okay, back to object occlusion. The cool thing about shadows is they also work on occluded objects. So as you can see here, we can actually cast shadows onto our physical environment. Uh, but again, this only works if we've added an occluded object to our scene. Okay, so before you begin, just make sure that you are in room scale mode. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to outline my mirror. 
And this is going to serve as our portal window. And once I get the basic shape, I can always edit it to align it perfectly with my mirror. So in order for this portal to work, we need to occlude the walls around it. So I'm gonna pop into dollhouse mode by using my grip buttons and zooming out. And I'm going to build out the wall around the portal window with uh, a few basic cube shapes. Okay, so we're back in room scale mode and you can see our portal window is starting to take some shape. So let's go ahead now and add our virtual environment to the other side of the portal. Uh, you can build your own environment and shapes, but for this tutorial, I uploaded a pre-made virtual environment off Sketchfab. So I'm gonna bring in the model and I'm going to align it to the back side of the wall. Now to finish off the effect, I need to add pass through to our wall objects. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, this is looking good. But as you can see, our virtual environment is bleeding around the edges of our wall. So let's pop it back into dollhouse mode and let's just extrude the sides of these objects so we get the full effect. We don't have to worry about being too precise with this. We just wanna make sure the virtual environment is completely covered. All right, that's it. We have now completed our portal. We are fully immersed in our physical world, but we also have this virtual world that's just on the other side of our wall. Okay, just one final note before we wrap up. If you want to upload your own environment to shapes, it's super easy to do. First of all, just make sure that your 3D model is in an either OBJ, GLTF, or GLB file format, and that it's under 20 megabytes. Go to shapes.app where you'll be prompted to log into your dashboard. And when you're logging in, make sure that you use the same email that you used when you initially set up your Shapes account. Once you're in your dashboard, go to the Imported tab, click on Upload, and upload your models. And then once you're back in Shapes, you can access your imports by pressing the Shapes button on your non-dominant hand controller. Then click on the Assets Library and Import tab, and uh, navigate to this icon right here, and that's it. You'll find a menu with all your uploaded assets. Okay, everybody, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. I hope your creative juices are flowing. Have fun using Shapes XR to create portals and to come up with your own unique designs and mixed reality. Bye, everybody.